Let me be lonely You won't believe me And I love you only I'd rather be lonely Than happy with somebody else Keep going, Tom You might find the night time The right time for kissing My time is night time For just reminiscing Regretting instead of forgetting With somebody else There'll be no one Unless that someone is Independently blue. I don't want your love and I don't want to borrow to have it today and I give back tomorrow. My love is your love, there's no old love for no. Welcome to Fall 2021 Convocation. I am Gilbert Contreras and I am the interim president and it is my pleasure. <laughs> it is my pleasure to welcome you to our first live streamed convocation. Thank you so much to our faculty jazz cadre for sharing your talents with us. We will hear from them again later at the end of the program. We're excited to offer this hybrid approach to convocation as we gradually and safely return to campus. For those of you in the audience, it's a pleasure to see you here. 
Our theater team did a great job keeping you socially distanced for your safety, and thank you for wearing your mask. Hello to our colleagues tuning in from home. We know you are with us in spirit, and our community remains strong, even though we are distant. We will conclude the live event. <coughs> the live stream video will take time to process, but we will be available to watch later. I'd like to start by acknowledging and thanking a few of the leaders from the North Orange County Community College District who have joined us here today. Trustee Stephen Blount. <laughs> Student Trustee Aaron Lacourt. <laughs> Vice Chancellor Fred Williams. <laughs> District Director of Public and Governmental Affairs, Kai Stearns. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our Fullerton College executive team. We may be small, but we are mighty. Dr. Jose Ramon Nunez, Vice President of Instruction. <laughs> Rodrigo Garcia, Vice President of Administrative Services. <laughs> Lisa McFerrin, Director of Campus Communications. <laughs> Jean Foster, Executive Assistant. Nitzia Hamlet, Administrative Assistant too. You'll often hear me say, people make Fullerton College the special place that it is. And it's all members of our Fullerton College family, including our deans, our faculty, our managers, our classified professionals, who make Fullerton College a supportive college for our students. Please, Join me in recognizing them for their contributions to Fullerton College. <laughs> this continues to be a defining time where we have done more, worked harder, and under challenging circumstances. Since we last met in person for convocation in January 2020, several new Hornets have joined the college. Please join me in welcoming them to the Fullerton College family. I'm happy to share with you that this morning we are pleased to have student leaders from Associated Students with us in person and watching online. And now I'm pleased to introduce our interim chancellor, Fred Williams, who brings from the board, who brings from the board and chancellor's staff. Wow, we can't really see anything from up here. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Contreras. It's a pleasure to, to be here. Good morning, Fullerton College, and welcome back to campus. It feels wonderful and surreal to be on stage again, looking at real people in real time, although I can't really see you all that, all that well. Uh, Dr. Marshall couldn't be with us today, but she asked me to convey greetings from district services staff, as well as the Board of Trustees. Most of you know that Dr. Marshall will be retiring at the end of this month and that the board has extended the permanent chancellor's search through um, hopefully uh, November and we can find somebody very quickly. Uh, but maybe you don't know that the board has appointed me, I guess Gil actually just mentioned it, that I will be the interim chancellor for four months, effective um, September 1st. So I'm not technically the uh, interim chancellor yet. And even though I never expected to be the interim chancellor again, I do promise to lead the district while we search uh, for our new, our new chancellor. I did want to just kind of go over a few things that I would like to try to accomplish while out in, in that short four months. The first thing will be the recruiting and the hiring of the new chancellor. Uh, trying to address the issues related to COVID-19, both um, uh, for employees and our students. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the 2020 census data is about to be released and we'll have to review our trustee areas. Uh, we are having some issues with our FTES and we wanna look at it from two perspectives. Our enrollments are down significantly and we're also finding that we have a considerable number of fraudulent uh, student registrations that are taking uh, seats in our financial aid. Certainly there's uh, 
more work to be done on negotiations that we need to complete for some of our bargaining units, and there's always the other duties as assigned. As the interim chancellor, I'll have seven bosses, so I'll sh I'm sure I'll be very busy. On the construction front, we've been very busy and we're making great progress on the new humanities building. I had the opportunity to walk past there this, this morning. This is the first uh, substantial Measure J project that we're completing and it's turning out to be quite the show, showpiece. I'm really excited that, uh, you know, I, I am a former Hornet student and I'm really looking forward to taking my next Japanese class in that, in that building. Um, I'm also very excited that we've hired our architects and our builder for a couple of uh, projects. We're kind of looking at it one, as one project, but there will be a new maintenance and operation building here on the campus, as well as a new building across the street, across Chapman, that will be housing our new um, veteran center. And both of those projects are expected to be completed by winter of 2023, so we're real excited about that. So in, in closing, I'd like to uh, thank all of you for your energy and efforts during the challenging pandemic. It was actually quite um, inspiring to see everyone pull together to really support our, our students. So again, uh, best of luck for the new year and welcome back. Thank you, Mr. Williams. And I really especially want to thank you for stepping forward and leading during this time. You're a true leader who steps forward when called for. You're the home team. And thank you for always serving the North Orange County Community College District. Next, please welcome to the stage Mr. Marwin Luminarius, president of our Fullerton College Classified Senate. Wow, here we go again. Thank you, Dr. Contreras. Good morning, everyone. My name is Marwan Luminarius, and it's my pleasure to welcome you back on behalf of Classified Senate. It's a very bright out here. I actually forgot what lighting looks like. <laughs> um, I still can't believe that we are welcoming you, welcoming you back for fall 2021, live streamed on YouTube. I always thought that if I ever ended up on YouTube, it would be because I became some kind of hot Instagram model. So I guess some dreams do come true. <laughs> Despite our challenges, classified professionals have, consi have consistently gone above and beyond. Our, let's see, where's the remote? The remote is somewhere. Our classified professionals who won the Classified Recognition Award for Spring 2021 were Stephanie Rodriguez, from Student Life and Leadership. Thank you, Lisa. And Alex Chum from our Facilities Night Crew. Congratulations again to you both. And during our summer classified appreciation drive-through, we, we do those things, we have drive-throughs. Um, we actually announced our Classified of the Year Award recipient, Azeen Biatani. Now, if if you've ever had an emergency tech support issue, I'm sure you were saved by Azeen. She is our IT special forces, or angel, depending on who you ask. And she is our expert in all things technology. But if you see her on campus, uh, please give her a wave, but remain socially distanced. <laughs> we have to protect Azeen at all costs. <laughs> Now, I know a lot of you are probably very excited to return to the hive or nest. I'm not sure what hornets make. But, I mean, some of us have been back for at least twice, uh, two times a week now. And personally, it's really nice not having to pay for your own air conditioning. Um, but my golden retriever's uh, separation anxiety actually got a lot worse now that I'm not with her 24-7. Uh, uh, that's butter. She's on the dog version of Xanax. Um, so she's really chill these days. But when I look into her eyes, I can tell that she blames me a little bit. 
I guess what I'm saying is that there's going to be an adjustment period, especially for those of us who have the option to work from home. You probably won't miss your commute or putting on makeup. I mean, I don't. I, I don't wake up like this. Uh, or putting on pants. Same. But when we do return to campus, I encourage you to remember those of us who couldn't work from home. We had entire teams who never left campus during this pandemic. Our friends from ACT, MNO, Campus Safety, they kept our servers running and our systems on. So when we do see each other again, I hope that we remember that classified professionals are essential. You were always essential. Until then, thank you, and have a great semester. Thank you, Marwin, for your inspiring words and for reminding us how important our classified professionals are for making Fullerton College a very special place. I echo his sentiment. Thank you, classified professionals. Next on our agenda is Dr. Kim Orlegen, president of the Fullerton College Faculty Senate. She has important college business, but not at Fullerton College. She's helping her son move into his freshman dorm and sends her greetings from video message. This past year and a half has been difficult for most of us. We've struggled both personally and professionally in ways that we could never have imagined. Usually many of us are pretty charged up at this point in August and looking forward to entering the classroom on the first day of the academic year, greeting our students and chatting with our colleagues. But this fall, so many challenges and uncertainties lie ahead of us. However, I am confident that we faculty will work hard to do what we've always done in the classroom, virtual or otherwise, foster a sense of belonging, establish a culture of respect and trust, encourage diverse perspectives, respectfully challenge beliefs and thoughts, and model critical thinking by navigating challenging topics with open minds and from myriad reasonable perspectives before landing on conclusions. We faculty will rise to the occasion yet again and cultivate a healthy and collaborative environment in which our students can learn and grow. What I also encourage us to do this year is to promote a similarly healthy and collaborative environment for all of us as colleagues. After engaging with most of our college, colleagues on important and difficult work through our computer screens for over a year, we have perhaps struggled to nurture a community of care and kindness among ourselves as faculty and between faculty and administrators. But a community of care and kindness is essential. We cannot move forward on our goals to become an anti-racist college or to build a successful and transformative guided pathways infrastructure, to name a couple of efforts, if we cannot work together collegially. This is not to say that equity and anti-racist outcomes will be achieved simply by understanding and empathizing with each other, or that racism will be solved by grabbing a beer with a colleague we don't know well, or that I am saying, let's all just get along. But turning acquaintance colleagues into folks we know better, as well as listening to each other with empathetic ears, can help us to move forward together on our efforts to become the college we would like to be and the community we would like to become. Collaboration and collegiality partnered with courage and candor are to my mind a crucial mix. Indeed, as we teach our students, healthy debate is a cornerstone, cornerstone of academia. Now more than ever, we need to listen to each other and trust that we are all in this work to make a positive difference in the lives of our students. While we may disagree about exactly how that positive difference manifests and which path to take to affect constructive change, 
I'd like to believe that our shared goal of helping students will win out. I'd like to believe that we can build up a reservoir of trust among us from which we can draw when we disagree so that we can do so in productive ways. We won't see eye to eye on everything and that's okay. It's the creation of a community of trust that will ultimately enhance the lives of everyone, most especially our students. To employ cliche, these are uncertain times. Many uncertainties lie ahead globally and locally. As we face changes in the district and college administration, let's recognize that we faculty are the ones who often dedicate decades and entire careers to FC. It is the faculty, along with many of our stellar classified professional colleagues, who are the consistent core of the college. The more we can work effectively together, the more our voice will impact the future of Fullerton College. And the more we can work together with the college and district administration, the classified professionals, and the students, the bigger the team and the larger the impact on our shared goal to help students succeed. Thank you for engaging in the essential work of educating our students and helping to transform their lives and improve our college. Have a fantastic semester. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Orlegin, and thank you all faculty for your creativity, for your resilience, and for your commitment to educate during these uncertain times. On behalf of all Hornets and generations of Hornets, we are truly grateful. At this time, I'd like to welcome up an important update on guided pathways from our Pathways Steering Committee co-chairs, Dr. Danny Wilson and Professor Matt Taylor. Thank you so much and welcome back to the fall. My name is Danny Wilson. I'm the Dean of the Library Learning Resources Division and I'm joined by my fabulous colleague, Matt Taylor. He is a faculty member in Communication Studies and we form the co-chairs of the Guided Pathways Committee. Um, let's see. I'm supposed to point, I forgot. There we go. Uh, following the people who came before me, I have to echo that it really is the people who make this place special and I have, I cannot go forward talking about some of the projects we're working on without saying a great big thank you. So many people have engaged in this work with us. Uh, it's a heavy lift to transform an institution and certainly we couldn't and we haven't done it alone. So thank you to all these people who are on the screen. First and foremost, our Pathways Steering Committee, um, our various work groups, and we have four of them, the co-chairs, all the members, all of our task forces, those members. We've been blessed to have hundreds of students engage with us throughout the last four years. Um, their voice has been invaluable. Uh, we've had many symposia, events, and, and various activities that we've touched so many uh, employees on campus and it's just been truly uh, gratifying for us, so we want to say thank you. You might know that we are into our last year of, of our, of our five-year state grant. And the last four years have gone by quickly. We do have one year left. Uh, our money needs to be spent by June of next year. However, our programs will not stop. We have many uh, that are continuing, and those are the few that I'm going to talk about in a moment. So some of our big continuing projects include the First Year Experience Program. As the name would suggest, it's a program that we are designing to uh, help our first-time students on campus. We are busy, our counselors and our instructional faculty are working together to create curriculum maps. And these maps for 250-ish degrees and certificates that we have on campus are being uploaded to Program Mapper, a software program that's gonna make it easier for students to navigate those programs and find their, their programs in their homes. Uh, we have an implementation team that's working very hard to bring Starfish to campus. Um, and there it, we're hoping to roll that out very shortly as well. We have data coaches from each division uh, working with our Office of Institutional Effectiveness to bring data literacy into programs, so thank you to all the data coaches out there. Uh, we have a, ver a fairly newer program. It's the Instructional Success Teams. We're hoping that you're going to hear more about these uh, teams in your division meetings. 
uh, but this is designed to bring equity, professional learning, student support, uh, and data together to uh, create equitable and achievement for our students, e equitable achievement to our students. We're still working on PSLO redesign and integrating those into our curriculum maps. Uh, we're hoping to bring real-time degree audit and certificate audit to uh, our campus, so a and and enrollment services. We're working really hard to clean up uh, errors in banner and to um, make transcript uh, reconfiguration a reality. Uh, we're working on e-portfolios and badging systems to demonstrate student work and achievement. And then, of course, ongoing improvements to the things that we already do really well, like my path and student orientation. Um, we do a lot of good things on this campus, and we're just hoping to enhance them and make them a little bit more transparent for our students, easier for them to navigate, and of course, just create those equitable outcomes um, that our students, whom we love, so deserve. I'm going to turn this now over to Matt, who's going to talk about some of our other programs. Good morning, everyone. It's so exciting to be back in our final year of the grant, and as we begin to see a lot of the changes that we've been working on through for the last four years, actually start making it into some of our processes and into the classroom. As many of you on the faculty know, this is our big fall for instructional program review. And this is a really important part for Guided Pathways because Guided Pathways has asked us to begin to look not just at the course level success for students, but really begin to imagine the to total program success. How many students are actually completing their certificates and their degrees? And as you've been part of the curriculum mapping, if you've been part of those discussions with us for the last couple of years, you know that we have had a goal of increasing program literacy among our faculty and staff on this campus. And with the help of Josh Ashenmiller and the Program Review Committee, I think all of that comes together this year in the Program Review Template. And let me just pause again and thank the Program Review Committee and Josh for their really incredible, thoughtful work last year. You may not know it, but they visited almost every important committee on campus, took amazing amounts of feedback on how we could improve the program review experience. And the new template is informed by all of those discussions. And I think it's important that we also realize that, that the new template is available. In fact, Josh the other day emailed all faculty. You should have received an email from him with the template, with the faculty handbook, with a video of an appendix for data that the Office of Institutional Effectiveness has put together. And I think what we really want to stress with faculty is it is so important, and you've heard this, it's kind of a cliche, but we have to move away and take advantage this year of moving away from compliance mindset. Please, this year, this fall, take advantage of the opportunity not just to fill out the boxes, not just to fill out the grids, but to really take this opportunity to think thoughtfully about your programs. I hear faculty all the time say, I just want to teach. I just want to help my students. This is the time to celebrate that. That's what program review is all about. It is about figuring out whether we actually are helping our students advance and transfer and get the certificates and the workforce training that they need. And we would really encourage you to take advantage of those resources that we have in addition to the materials that the uh, Program Review Committee has provided, our data coaches have been trained to help each division and to help each program work through the Appendix A data worksheet. So we're not asking you to do it alone. In addition, um, there's going to be Zoom Q&A sessions provided by the Program Review Committee, and there's also the videos and uh, resources that we talked about. Program review, as you all know, is an incredible part of planning for this college. A lot of thought has gone into that document, a lot of integration of all of our efforts on equity and guided pathways, and we are really encouraging you to take it seriously. The second important part of Guided Pathways has been to really make sure that data is informing our decision making and our planning on this campus. And if you've been working here or going to school as a student, you know that over the last few years we have been conducting a lot of different surveys to get that data. But one of the things we realized in our Guided Pathways work is that we weren't really using the results of that data, we weren't really reading out the results of that data to the entire campus. And so this summer we formed what was called the Survey Inquiry Group, which is a group of people to look at surveys. 
And we looked at all of the major surveys that over the last couple of years the campus has taken. And these have looked at everything from our CTE programs to our student engagement to our faculty engagement to race and climate studies. All of them collectively were brought together and an incredible uh, group of people uh, began to go through and look at them over the summer. We spent about six weeks looking at them. And here is a good idea of the representation you can see that we had uh, quite a few faculty uh, that were involved in the discussions. We had part-time faculty, classified professionals, and students. And we also had managers and the entire Office of Institutional Effectiveness team. And over that six-week session over the summer, there was amazing uh, discussion. There was an investigation of every survey. We were given all of the data, all of the reports. There was a tremendous amount of robust discussion. And that discussion is going to be put together in a final report that will be released to the campus this uh, in October, we believe, about mid-semester. There's one theme. I asked the survey inquiry group at the end of our meetings in the summer, what's the one thing that you want me to communicate to the faculty and to the campus about this report? And they said this one simple sentence, and, I, and I'm going to attribute it to Marcus uh, because he was the author, but he said, the campus needs to know that although we serve thousands of students every year incredibly well, we can and should do better. There is tremendous amounts of data on instruction, on student support, on race and climate that indicate that we're doing really well, but also indicate that compared to other colleges, compared to our own standards, we can still improve the lives and the journeys of students at Fullerton College. And we want you to receive that report. We want you to use that report. If you are part of a decision-making group, we hope that you reach out and make sure that that report reaches your committee. We wanted to make sure that we reinforce the fact that all of this work is important. We wanted to reinforce the fact that we are making a difference. And just in the last couple of weeks, we received some data that I think is incredibly promising. And the first shout out goes to the English department. We have been working in English, I should say we, I'm not part of English. English has been working incredibly hard uh, because of AB 705 to make a difference in students' lives and to help students get through that English transfer level English class in the first year. And the data just released shows that in 1920, we had over 70% of our students who attempted a transfer level English in the first year successfully complete that. That number is 500 more students completing English 100 in their first year than just two years ago. 500 more students are successfully getting through that program. And what was most incredible about this data is that the DI impact on our black student population was erased in 1920. This information shows that not only are we increasing the success levels for all of our students, but the uh, areas in which we're going at the equity gaps are also being successful. The same is true for the second shout out, and that's to math. In the math department also has shown some incredible uh, gains. There we are now up to 49% of all students attempting transfer level math, completing successfully that degree in the first year. That represents 300 more students than we're doing it just a couple of years ago. Our goal is to remove the barriers to student success. And anybody working in this business knows that the major barriers have been math and English for many of our students. And those departments have been working steadfastly to make a difference. Combined with the other efforts of Guided Pathways, we are headed in the right direction. Does it mean that we're done? Absolutely not. But it does show that our hard work, our dedication, are willing to be introspective and to look at ourselves and imagine a being a better professor, imagine being a better counselor, imagine being a better financial aid officer. The ability for us to imagine a better space for students is working, and we are making a difference in the lives of students here at Fullerton College. So we want to thank you for your continued support of Guided Pathways. We want to thank you for the hard work and introspection that you're doing on the campus because it's paying off and it's making a difference in the only thing at the end of the day that matters, and that's our students. So thank you.
left my mask on. Thank you, Professor Matt Taylor and Dr. Danny Wilson for your leadership in Guided Pathways and the entire Pathways Steering Committee for helping Fullerton College transform our institution to meet the needs of students. At this time, I'm going to share with you a few comments on how we can reimagineer Fullerton College. My fellow Hornets, as we begin the fall 21 semester, I want to challenge us to embrace this unique opportunity and this unique moment in world history to own the vision of Fullerton College. As Hornets, we embrace our responsibility to transform lives and inspire positive change in the world. This is our collective vision, to transform lives and inspire positive change. This vision provides us with a North Star to think creatively about who we are as a college, what, our col what role our college plays in educating the communities we serve, and how we continue to transform our institution to serve students with equity and excellence as the foundation. This vision is especially important as we live through a global pandemic and as we collectively confront structural racism. The impact of the global pandemic and structural racism are not distant concepts. These realities define the lived experiences of our students and all members of our campus community. Hornets, the pandemic and racism require us as an educational institution to look in the mirror. As we look in the mirror, we need to reflect on this moment in time, our context. What do we know about this moment in time? As I shared with our honors students at the honors certification ceremony this past May, we live in a time where people seek affirmation for their views, not information to critically reflect on truth. We live in a time where people seek partial truth, seek partial information, and seek strategies that divide humanity. We live in a time defined by racial inequity and fragile social relationships. These fragile social relationships are on our campus and in our district. We live in a time where people are quick to judge and slow to provide grace and respect for opposing viewpoints. These judgments and prejudices are on our campus and in our district. There is no blueprint for community colleges during a pandemic. There is no blueprint for ending structural racism in education or society. This moment in time requires bold and proactive leadership. Leaders not defined by title, but by character, engagement, and commitment to advance our college mission. As a college, Fullerton College has been the flagship for NOCCCD and for the entire California community college system in so many important areas. Here are a few examples. Before there were statewide efforts at food distribution, Fullerton College had the Chris Lamb and Tony Dubois Memorial Food Bank. Before there were statewide efforts at equity and anti-racism, Fullerton College created the Cadena Cultural and Transfer Center, Ethnic Studies Curriculum, Community Cultural Celebrations on our campus, an Equity Walk campaign, a Males Achieving Success Conference, Kinder Caminata, Resources for Teaching Men of Color Through Staff Development, and a college-wide anti-racism statement. Before there were statewide dual enrollment efforts, Fullerton College provided a number of courses in high schools. These efforts started with Fullerton College EOPS decades ago. Before there, were, there was AB 705, the statewide legislation to eliminate remedial courses, 
Fullerton College implemented transfer level English for incoming students. Before there were statewide efforts to eliminate fraudulent students, the federal government partnered with Fullerton College on how to prevent fraudulent students from receiving financial aid. Before there was funding for enhanced mental health support for students, Fullerton College established a model behavioral intervention team and robust behavioral health services that includes embedded mental health support for targeted student communities. These examples showcase the impact and leadership role our college plays in the community college system. It takes leadership to chart a radically student-centered path to lead with love and to prioritize equity outcomes, not merely equity objectives. It is time for Hornets to provide a model once again, a model of how to define our college as a community institution with the benefit of so many valuable lessons from the last 18 months. There may not be a blueprint, but at Fullerton College, we have our mission, our vision, and our core values to guide us as we strengthen our hive. Some lessons provide us with accolades, and some lessons provide us with areas for growth. Hornets, I invite you to take a journey through space with me in the spirit of redefining Fullerton College. As a college, we are implementing our gradual return to the hive. We must embrace the fact that our hive has transformed over the past two years. As a college, we have taken our hive to the hornets with remote classrooms, virtual support services, and creative ways to build community. Community, a Fullerton College core value. Let's embrace the space we hold in the hearts of generations of hornets and millions of people that live in North Orange County who love Fullerton College for its role as a community institution. Beginning today, we will define our return to the hive and our efforts to take the hive to the hornets with the pillars of safety, people, action, community, and equity. We must embrace the reality that we are redefining ourselves and our destination is not the Fullerton College of 2019. Our journey through space begins with S. The S represents safety. As we define safety, it's important to be mindful of physical safety and emotional safety. Our response to COVID-19 has been guided by the health and safety of our campus community as the top priority. We will remain committed to this approach. Our efforts to address anti-racism have prioritized our commitment to provide a sense of belonging for all members of our community. It is imperative that we continue on this journey guided by our core values of equity, diversity, and inclusivity. In short, as a college, we must view safety from a holistic perspective. The P represents people. Our journey over the last 18 months has reinforced the undeniable truth that we are all people first. And as people, we all experience love, loss, fear, hope, and uncertainty as we move through life. These last 18 months reminded us that Fullerton College is defined by people. We each have unique roles and contributions as students, faculty, classified, professionals, and managers. It is people that took the hive to the hornets. And as a college, we must acknowledge all the hard work and sacrifice the Hornets contributed to educate and serve our students. In short, as a campus and, and as a district, we must put people first. The A represents action. As a college and as a district, we are poised to seize this time of transition as opportunity to positively pivot in a direction that emphasizes educating the whole student and caring for the whole employee. At this moment in time, we must lead with love and courage 
to move ongoing campus conversations into action-oriented implementation. There are so many areas where we have engaged in robust conversation, such as sustainability, guided pathways, equity, facilities, and anti-racism. In short, our time is now to make things happen. The C represents community. The Fullerton College community has never been defined by 321 East Chapman. Our concept of community needs to continue on its evolution that incorporates a vibrant campus life as well as a vibrant virtual connection. Our sense of community must transcend the physical location of our beautiful campus. Students and employees must feel that sense of community when we are working and learning from home or any other location. Our tradition of once a hornet, always a hornet is contagious and part of our individual and collective identities. It defines us. And we must work hard to continue this legacy, especially as we confront COVID and structural racism. In short, our sense of community must inspire pride in Hornet Nation, both in person, virtually, or both. The E represents equity. We must move our equity conversations into actions that produce outcomes and not merely objectives. For many years, our college has produced many initiatives to advance equity objectives. Now is the time to embed equity in everything that we do. Our goals to advance equity and anti-racism must be grounded in respect. Respect, another Fullerton College core value. We must be mindful of the diversity of opinions and call people into the conversation and not merely call people out in conversation. We must embrace the fact that hornets are at different stages of racial consciousness and different stages of our own dynamic identities. We must embrace the truth that not everyone will agree with our actions to produce results to advance equity and anti-racism. And we must still be bold and have the courage to move equity and anti-racism forward in the spirit of our collective mission, vision, and core values. Equity should guide our work to create brave and safe spaces. How we support the whole student and the whole employee. How we move campus and district conversations into action and how we celebrate the diversity of our community. In short, equity is our North Star. Collectively, we have the opportunity to reinvent Fullerton College inspired by the space framework that I have shared with you today. Our work is transformative. Our work requires trust. Our work requires resilience. As we reimagine our hive, I quote my friend and colleague, Otis Rowley III, who is the Senior Vice President for the U.S. Equity and Economic Opportunity Initiative at the Rockefeller Foundation. What gets measured gets done. What gets watched gets done. This moment requires us to fail fast, learn fast, and fix fast. His message reminds us that we must take collective ownership of our community priorities. The communities we serve are counting on us to fulfill the promise and purpose of the community college. In closing, as we prepare to welcome nearly 18,000 students to Hornet Nation and 4,000 of them to classrooms in person on campus at 321 East Chapman, my message to you is thank you. We are in the middle of one of the most uncertain times in human history and it is my honor to serve you as interim president. Thank you for being the leaders of today, for defining our world with love and beauty, and for rising to life's challenges with grace and humility. In short, go get them, Hornets. Inspire positive change in this world. Once a Hornet, always a Hornet.
It is a real pleasure to provide this convocation in our campus theater. And it takes a lot of work to make this happen, especially during this time. And I want to really thank all the people behind the scenes who made this day possible, both in person and virtually. And I especially want to thank our Dean John Tabay uh, for providing us with support to use this facilities. Without further ado, let me introduce to you Jamie Hsu. You know, the last time I remember vividly and haunted by continually, the last time I stood right here at this podium in this exact location on stage five years ago in one month. You see, my husband passed away from cancer on August 30th, 2016. We held his celebration of life in this theater. I gave his eulogy right here in front of a full house of people. I spoke of his greatness, his infectious humor and kindness, the longing for his return, and the long road to the new normal that was ahead for my son and I. Oddly, it feels very strange and similar over the last year and a half. You see, for me, COVID felt and continues to feel like various stages of grief. There was a period of anger and deep confusion. Then there's that energized boost of, I can do anything, let's do everything. So I dove into new skill sets, like recording a new album, composing new music, camping and exploring the world with my son, running, painting my house, found a new sort of bravery in going to see live music and jam sessions in Los Angeles by myself, and finding the courage to finally put myself out there as a performer. During COVID times, it was learning how to make sourdough bread. Yes, I was one of those people. Digging into vocal science, learning how to make Zoom sessions interesting by taking other online classes, organizing my digital life, and learning Logic Pro and Adobe Premiere so I too could join the ranks in creating and contributing yet another virtual choir video and concert to those overly saturated online platforms. Oh, and don't forget hunting down enough toilet paper. Apparently one can never have enough toilet paper. Then in the next stage, the reality sets in. The reality that this is truly long-term. Anger and confusion return. This is a new normal. The, real the realization sets in that everything will and has to change, including our perspective and our perceptions. However, all the while, I knew then, and I know now that I need to get up every day, put on a happy face, and be courageous, inspiring, uplifting, and move forward for myself, for my son, and for my students. I love teaching. I was born to be a teacher. When I was in middle school and high school, I was always the piano accompanist for the choirs. Anytime the director was out for the day, they always told the substitute, oh, don't worry about anything, Jamie will take care of it all. I didn't know it at the time that music was my life's path. I actually thought I was going to be the first woman president or a pediatrician, I can't stand the sight of blood, uh, or a mechanical engineer. Hmm. Lo and behold, I entered college as you know, a piano performance major. Um, that soon, soon turned into music education as my path was clearly carved out for me. It is my lifelong passion. I was meant to do this, and I thank my lucky stars every day that after 19 years here at Fullerton College, I get to work here with amazing colleagues and students. I would like to ask you all a couple of questions right now. 
Why are you a teacher? What is it about teaching that you love? I mean, we're usually blamed for not working hard enough, that we get our summers off, that we are not accountable for anything that we teach, that we are generally a drag on the taxpayer dollars with our tenure system, our benefits, and our union, that teaching is easy. I even had some students and some people in the past that have said, if I don't make it as a performer, I'll just be a teacher. I say to those students, you will never teach my son. Teaching holds many hats. We are not only a teacher, we are also cheerleaders, counselors, role models, organizers, budgeters, program prom promoters, and masters of Excel, Word, the Google Suite, and now Zoom and Canvas. In my and many other fine arts educators' cases, you can also add to that list a live audio mixer, a recorded sound engineer, and a video editor. Sounds exhausting, huh? Well, it really is. If you're good, it really is. But it's so worth it. Inspiring lives is so worth it. We have a gift, one that needs to be spread and never taken for granted. A few months ago, my very impressionable, YouTube-loving son was asking me why on earth teachers become teachers. He proceeded to say that teachers have a really difficult job and really don't get paid that much. He then said, people should treat teachers so much better because, man, teachers are the ultimate influencers. Wow, that was truly profound statement from a 13-year-old. Just think about that for a minute. We actually influence teenagers? Wait, isn't that the majority of our students? I know that teaching holds many hats, but whether online or in person, it is our responsibility to serve these students and make it the best possible experience for them and the greater good. I know firsthand that last year was over exhausting. Unfortunately, this year is certainly starting out that way too. If it weren't so darn cheesy at this moment to sing the great hit song Whitney Houston made famous back in 1985, I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. I would, but I'm not. Instead, I'm going to sing about unbridled joy, about being grateful for who you are and those amazing gifts you are offered, about spreading and sharing those gifts freely, about putting one foot in front of the other, moving forward, leaving those worrisome cares behind to find and project that positive light and outlook on life to yourself, your family, your friends, your colleagues, and your students who desperately need you right now. You've got this. Let's do this. Over here we have Mike Scott on guitar. Bruce Babad on the flute and alto saxophone. Matt Johnson on drums. Lyman Medeiros on the bass. We are the faculty jazz cadre. Thank you so much. Grab your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street. Can you hear that pitter pat? And that happy tune is your. 
in college jazz cadre. Thank you Fullerton College for those of you who are in our audience socially distant and wearing masks and for the hundreds who are watching from around the world. Let's have an amazing fall 21 semester. Go Hornets! Thank you. 